I 100%ed Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 5. This means completing the story, upgrading every skill, suit tech and gadget, obtaining every suit and all customizable options, 100% completing every district and mission and of course collecting all of those sweet, sweet trophies. So how does this adventure begin? By of course swinging our way into a fight with the Sandman. Our suit's been upgraded from the last game and damn this swinging feels amazing. He just exploded. Man, hopefully we can calm him down. I've seen people lose control like this. Be careful. Good thing there too, Spider-Man now. Good luck. Sandman doesn't seem all there at the moment and the situation escalates. We seamlessly swap over to Miles which is so cool to see in action. Using Miles' electric powers we can create some crystals on Sandman to damage him. Thrown into the building Sandman creates sand clones a la Gara from Naruto and ends up dumping a giant water tank on top of himself. We then get launched so far into the air, forcing us to deploy our new web wings, allowing us to glide safely to the other side of the river, to deal the decisive blow with a supercharged attack, funneling the lightning from miles into the iron spider tech. Yo! This is sick! As Sandman gets taken away, we are introduced to Craven the Hunter, who's headed for New York to hunt down the strongest there is, earning me my first trophy. But what are we doing? Well, first we have to clean up Sandman's mess. But while doing so, I also got another trophy for switching up my outfit. Cleaning up the sand in the city, we run into our first Sandman crystal, where what we have to do is take down a bunch of sand clones protecting a fragment of Sandman's mind. So we collect our first chunk of Sandman brain and head home to meet up with MJ. That's when our friend Harry, who was missing in the first game, shows up at our house unannounced. Turns out he was sick. Like, really sick, I'm gonna die sick. But thanks to some miraculous new treatment, he's all better. Hmm, there's something fishy here, I'm sure. Next thing you know, we're escorting a raft vessel containing Mr. Negative, the man who murdered Miles' father in the first game. When the hunters strike, and between the choice of going after Mr. Negative or saving the people of the pier... Spider-Man, I need your help! Thankfully, Miles chooses to save the people on the pier. On my way to the next main mission, I earned the Splat Trophy by, uh, well, you know, splatting, I guess. Doing some side quests, some idiot kid named RJ abducted someone or something from the school, and eventually tracking him down, we find out it's just the mascot that's been stolen, so we safely return the costume to the school. Damn you, RJ. This did earn me a Captain America style suit for Miles to rock, also earning me the Brooklyn Pride Trophy. Rocking the 2099 suit as Peter, we track down one of Craven's dens. Seems he's captured the scorpion and wait, did he just straight up murder him on the spot? Okay, wasn't expecting that. This is when we learn he's actually hunting to kill these people and learn he's hunting for the black cat next. So we send Miles to look for her ASAP. Finding her stealing some scepter from the Sanctum Sanctorum, we chase after her ending up in Times Square Park where we battle some Craven goons and help Felicia escape. Bye, Felicia! Hmm, maybe I'll get to use this one now. Hmm, never mind, I guess. Taking a trip to the fair as Miles, we discover a new ride known as the Mysterium, created by the reformed villain Mysterio. Yep, this isn't suspicious at all. Okay, this is actually pretty cool. I'm a DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, things go wrong and the simulation begins to break down, landing Miles trapped. Thankfully, we can fight our way out. Uh, we will do our best to find out what happened. But until then... Closed for maintenance? This should be closed for good. We should not be trusting Mysterio. Meeting up with Peter, MJ, and Harry, Miles dips and the three go for some rides on some rides. Goes for some rides on some rides? Yeah, that makes sense. And compete in some whack-a-mole, earning this sweet cowboy hat. It's not too long before tragedy strikes, of course, as Craven's gang rock up to hunt Tombstone, another reformed villain performing at this theme park. Man. 
two in one place as the roller coaster derails, Peter swings in to save it. Nah, no shot, she oh, dies. Sorry. No. Oh. Yo, what? Oh, yeah, of course. Harry's using the venom powers. All right. Tracking down Craven's gang, we find Tombstone trapped in an old foundry. Harry wanting to understand his new powers rocks up in an Agent Venom looking suit, which is really cool. Managing to save Tombstone, we find out Harry is now immune to fire, but loud sounds do have some type of effect on him. Hey, let go of me, you weirdo. Oh, great. Typical MJ investigating a missing Kurt Connors, aka the Lizard, finds herself in the back of a hunter van and taken to an abandoned zoo. Woo, MJ gameplay so fun, yay. Why swing around with webs and glide around the city when you can walk slowly on the ground and, uh, wait, one shot any guard with a stun gun? Okay, well, I thought these guys were meant to be hunters and they're getting taken out by MJ. All right. Thankfully, Spider-Man and Agent Venom show up not too long after, but it's too little too late as Kraven turns Dr. Connors into the lizard once more, and all hell breaks loose in this camp. Fighting our way through the enemies, we come face to face with Kraven, and before we even know it, stabbed in the ribs. Ow. That looks like it hurts. Wait, is he dying? venomous as they say no <laughs> okay maybe he's really dying that would be crazy oh okay yeah this is yeah the symbiote is choosing peter Oh my god. Entering some type of rage mode with this new black suit, we can take down enemies in just a few hits. We managed to take them down and get away, but without the suit, Harry's sickness is returning. So we need to find a way to get it off ASAP. Dr. Connors is one of the ones who helped create the suit, so if we can track down the lizard and turn him back, hopefully we'll find a way to get the suit off. But now wearing the black suit, it earned me a new suit trophy. We found out about a dinner the hunters were having and infiltrated it as a waiter. Turns out this suit can just morph into whatever we need it to. We learn that Craven's actually sick and quite close to death. That's why he's searching for an adversary strong enough to kill him. Tracking him to the church, we have him on the ropes, but knocking Craven into the bell, our weakness is revealed. Loud sounds and vibrations. Craven gaining the upper hand, it's time for a tactical retreat. Next, I did some miscellaneous tasks like completing some Mysteriums, making sure to get the gold rank on it, of course. And afterwards, we work with Harry to make a lizard cure. But Craven follows us to the lab and burns the whole place down. Thankfully, though, we had just enough time to make the cure. All we've got to do now is actually find the lizard. But man, lifting up nine enemies with our symbiote tendrils never gets old. All of our symbiote powers are just so fun and the brutality of each takedown is so cool. Tracking the lizard as Miles, I earned my next trophy slackline, which was earned by taking down 25 enemies from a webline. Following the lizard onto the river, the hunters arrive and are trying to get a hold of the lizard. Launching from one ship to the next, chasing after them over the waters is just so perfect. I love this mission so much. Oh, let's slingshot over! <laughs> Peter rocks up for the assist, but dude is acting straight up whack. Look how he just threw that person down, and he's so mad, and I mean, I didn't even mess up, really. Finally tracking down the lizard in the sewers leads to this incredible fight. You're Kurt Connors, a brilliant scientist! 
Taking down all his health. We whip out the tendrils, pin him down, and... Oh, of course. The screech. Yep, that'll do it. Where you running off to? A museum. That's oddly fitting. Yeah, make sure to save the skull. That's important. Really not in the mood for the rampaging lizard in New York City thing right now. So we give chase through the city, but eventually find ourselves back in the sewers with a broken arm. But our symbiote snaps it right back into place for us. Well, time for round two. His mouth. I can inject the antidote into his gums if I get close enough. I don't know if it's just me, but you can really feel like the impact of the punches when you're in rage mode. And especially like the symbiote attacks, it's just like the oomph in the sound is just perfect. Like the sound design is great in this game. But landing one decisive symbiote blow, we take down the lizard. During the lizard, he awakens in a secret lab, and the origin of the symbiote is revealed to us, as well as how his arm went missing in the first place. Just touching that weird meteorite rock morphed the suit around Peter to look even what more venomous. He gave it to you? Not exactly. I was hurt, and, and it chose you. Which means it's more dangerous than I could have imagined. We need to call Oscorp. We need to destroy it. Destroy us? Did he just say us? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. You said it chose me, Doc. It makes me a better Spider-Man. Oh, hell no. Hey. Where did he go? <laughs> I thought he was going to straight up murder him then. Alright, we, we dipping. We dipping apparently. This earned me my next story trophy, medicine. Next I did some more spider bot hunting, and then did a few upgrades to our suit tech, increasing our damage and focus generation tremendously. This took me to a side story where I was aiming to stop these cultist people, and a disguised Yuri from the first game was assisting me. Whether she gets all mad when I tell her to, I guess, not kill this cult leader guy, and decides to fight me. Dude, we're on the same team here! What is happening? This path you're on never ends well, Yuri! Trust me! I feel like I'm doing this a bit out of order. It is seeming a bit more in control and less symbiote crazy. But anyway, after some patrolling, we head home to fall asleep and get tucked in by good old Simbi. That's what I'm calling him now. We're best friends. Oh, great. Now the hunters are here. MJ gameplay? Ah, even better. Wait, did Pete ditch us? What the heck? Oh, okay. I see what's happening. Simbi's in full control now. Uh, th that's probably not good. Chasing after him, he runs away and we give Chase his miles. Can you hunters leave us alone? I'm trying to talk to my bro here. Oh, MJ, you should not have done that. MJ. Run. No, screw this, screw this, screw this. Leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. I hate, I hate this, I hate I this so much. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, Pete, we're just gonna pretend like all of that didn't happen, Miles didn't get kidnapped, and you didn't try to kill your girlfriend? Okay, well, 
I guess you were asleep, and that was Simbi. So, I guess we should just go meet up with Harry, who is progressively getting worse. And look who's here, MJ as well. Mmm, okay. As Miles, we attempt to escape Craven's estate and seem to be successful in doing so when it's revealed that this was all intended as a lead up to a fight with the captured Mr. Negative. Our fighting with him reaches a stalemate as Mr. Negative draws us into his mind and attempts to corrupt us from within. In a fight within our head, we earned the trophy Overdrive, which required us to pull in six enemies at a time with the reverse flux ability. Defeating Mr. Negative by coming to terms with his trauma, Miles launched Mr. Negative out of the pit and towards freedom. Hopefully he'll be able to find Peter and then we'll get some help. I did some upgrades for our skills, bought some new suits, including the homecoming movie suit which looks so clean in this game, and then went to meet up with Mr. Negative who tells us where Miles is. But honestly, I'm kind of surprised Pete just decided to let Mr. Negative roam around on the street. Yeah, don't web up the villain or anything Pete, that would be smart. Arriving at the site we go full on rage mode and brutally destroy the place until finally it's our time to fight with Craven. Using our abilities we can stun Craven to get some good damage in, but in the second part of the fight Craven has access to a large bell, and you know we hate those. So every time it starts ringing, we get stunned, so we web it up as quick as possible and work on taking him down. Yeah, you like that, Craven? Stop! No. Oh shit, are we about to fight Pete? That'd be so cool. It's just, just me. Oh yeah, we so are. Oh yes, come on. Now fighting Pete as Miles, we have to use the abilities Pete help us master to take him down. Using the bell, we can stun him, but he webs it up just like we did. Everything everyone needs me to be. Yeah, you don't even answer my calls anymore, man. <laughs> you don't even answer my calls anymore. Yeah. Okay, that is pretty cool, though. Shit away from you, Pete. Oh, hell no. Okay. Come on. Let's move. The voice delivery of both Spider Man in this game is perfect. I don't think I've experienced a better performance in gaming voiceover than Yuri Lowenthal. For everything. Spider-Man do. But with the symbiote detached from Peter, we earn the Great Hunt Trophy. And then head to meet up with Dr. Connors to destroy the suit. But when we arrive, a very frail Harry is waiting for us in desperate need of the suit to keep himself alive. You finally got it off. Yeah, well, you can't have it. My hero. Academia. Harry. We've got to destroy it. It's too dangerous. I don't want you to lose yourself. Like I did. Pete. Please. You don't understand. Connor said it was- I saved your life! And you won't save mine? Okay. The glass Do you want broke. Me to die? Yeah. 
Yep, okay, yep. I'm so good in this. Time to fight. No! Don't hurt him. Father ever, I swear. And in a sick turn of events, we get to play as freaking Venom. This is freaking awesome. And on top of that, his attacks are even more devastating and almost one shot every enemy. We crash our way through Oscorp Tower, destroying it as we go, but when Craven and the Hunters rock up, things ramp up to 11 as we break through the building and down towards Times Square where it was time to take on Craven once again. This fight was more or less the same without the bell, but the venom attacks being so strong here, I was easily able to take Craven down. Oh, yeah, that's really taking him down, isn't it? Earning me the Leave Us Alone trophy. Well, I think now's probably a good time to focus on some side stuff. Completing the Sandman storyline, earning me the Grains of Sand trophy. And then I did a Miles side quest, earning me the My Community trophy. Ooh, pimp outfit. Cool. I also took the final picture for the New York, New York trophy and continued the story with Wraith. Without the Venom powers, we're back to using the old Iron Spider suit again. And I decided to rock the movie Stealth Suit since I was attempting to do this whole section in stealth. Turns out though, the leader of the cultists had a contingency plan. Oh shit. A fragmented piece of the symbiote? Oh, this isn't good. What all this was for? <laughs> Judgment. It's turning red, is that carnage? Carnage! Carnage! Oh! Oh yes! Are we gonna see carnage? Oh my god! No, past RJ, we are not. Since you just earned the trophy for completing that side quest, that means we're not going to see him in this game. Does that mean we might see him in a number three? Potentially. Along the way, I've been completing these other disconnected side stories known as FNSM requests, and the final one I freed a flock of pigeons for Howard, someone we helped in the first game, which earned me the new adventure trophy and also the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man trophy. I then purchased some more suits and fully upgraded my suit tech, earning me the fully loaded trophy. I then hunted all these hunter drones which led me to the chameleon's base of operations, where I almost died to a trap. But escaping I earned the data collector trophy and I see that the chameleon is still on the loose. Technically that's two villains roaming around freely. Sequel confirmed? Or is it more of a threequel? I don't know. Then rocking this sick Wolverine suit as Miles, I'm assuming hyping up the Wolverine game that's coming out, we take down the final hunter base and earn the Seek and Destroy trophy. I then finish collecting all the Prowler stashes and earn the co-signing trophy. And with all of that done, it was time to head back to the main story. I head back to the house to meet up with MJ, but Harry was already there waiting. Splitting another part off like how we did with Carnage, he creates Scream and converts MJ into the murderous symbiote. We beat the shit out of our girlfriend, never thought I'd say that in a sentence, and she manages to fight off the symbiote's control. This earns me the I Quit trophy, but Harry did manage to get away. 
Our problems are far from over though, as Harry now spreads more and more symbiotes across the city, converting people into mindless symbiote group monsters. Miles and Pete meet at the city hall, but on their way there, Dr. Connors advises Pete that he still may have traces of the symbiote inside of him. And as the two Spider-Men get overwhelmed, Mr. Negative shows up just in time to save them. But Pete's transforming back into Venom. But with Mr. Negative's help, we could clear it out from the root inside of his mind. While Mr. Negative pumps negative energy into the symbiote, we fight off symbiote goons and earn the Evolve Trophy. Overloading the symbiote with all that power seems to have no effect, but... Spider-Man, wake up! <gasps> Now we have anti-venom powers. I'm so glad they did this, earning me the antidote trophy. I love anti-venom, man. It's such a cool concept. Now all these symbiote nests have popped up all over the map, so I work on those and earn the amazing trophy for reaching max level 60. This also meant I could unlock every single skill in the game. Destroying the final nest, I earned the exterminator trophy, and then I finished the Mysterio quest line as Miles, earning me the Behind the Mask trophy. I then maxed out all my gadgets, earning me to the max trophy, and collected all the spider bots hidden around the city, which would eventually earn me a trophy once I go and finish the side quest, but picking up this final spider bot meant clearing everything in every single district, 100% protecting each one, thus earning me the gold trophy, Superior. But what did I get for collecting all those spider bots? Yankee, you seeing this? Bro, what the hell is happening? Oh, this is an Across the Spider-Verse Easter egg. Sick. Look at this, a spider hero. We're all saved. Um, hi. Who are you? Me? I'm just a bartender who does favors for people every now and then. And I've learned that rogue spider bots are dangerous and bad for business. Let me take those off your hands. Whoa! Who is this girl? I don't remember her from the movie. Thank you, Spider-Man. We can always count on you to do the right thing. You're welcome? And if Miguel comes looking for these, tell him finders keepers. Wait, who's Miguel? <laughs> oh, Name drop! Miguel name drop! What the hell was that? I, uh... Wish I knew. This eventually earned me the Funky Wireless Protocols Trophy. Now only a few more trophies remained, as well as taking on Venom. Coming up with a plan, MJ and Miles head into the Venom Den to get that weird rock which seems to be amplifying his powers, allowing him to spread the symbiote. Meanwhile, Peter plays babysitter with Venom and Harry until they can retrieve it. After playing as MJ for a bit, shooting the symbiotes with Sonic Blast, we find the crystal and get the heck out of there as soon as possible. Not only because it's scary, but also because it's MJ gameplay. Miles does help us escape, and meanwhile Peter goes toe to toe with Venom. This fight has four rounds, but with our anti-Venom abilities, we might have a chance. Like all the other boss battles, it's all about dodging and creating openings with our abilities to do the most damage. Okay, that was doing a decent amount of damage, so if we can keep... If we can keep sucking him, or whatever the heck we're doing to him... That would be ideal. Oh, Alright, decent that. damage. It's messing with your head, Harry! You're my best friend! Then why don't you trust us? For these guys? I trust you, Harry! Not that thing you're wearing! I'm not a thing! Alright, no, don't bring in more enemies! I think the best way to get rid of that second health bar is with abilities. I think our general attacks do much. Yeah, that did heat. Okay, maybe if I didn't miss... Okay. <laughs> 
yes, whale on him. Sucky time. Oh, do you see how much damage that finisher did? Come on, we nearly had him. The meteorite. You took it from us. Realizing we stole the meteorite, Rock Venom grows freaking devil wings and flies us to Miles and MJ, who have the rock. Knocking Pete out for the time being, Miles has to deal with Venom now, and the battle continues. You're not getting this rock, man! Miles' insane combo potential and aerial capabilities help us deal with him relatively easy, though. I know you talk to your mom, just like I talk to my dad. MJ then attempts to destroy the rock using the particle accelerator, but Venom stops us just before we can. We gave you our chance! <laughs> Purging the Venom symbiote from Harry using our anti-venom powers, all is returned to normal. But now Harry is left in a coma, and his father somehow blames Spider-Man for this mess. Um, you're the one who stuck an alien to your child, bro. Get the G serum ready. ASAP. If G serum is what I think it is, being the goblin serum, I feel really bad for Harry since this guy was born sick, got controlled by an alien venom, and is probably going to get brain rotted by the goblin serum, setting up three villains for the next game. Oh, and then we got this Cindy Moon tease as well for the character Silk, so I'd say this all but confirms a Spider-Man 3, and I cannot freaking wait. But although we completed the story and got our final trophy, Heal the World, there's just a few more things left to do, like obtaining the final suit, which looks actually super weird, and I have no idea what it's a reference to, but it looks almost like a space suit, so maybe we could be heading to space in the next game? I don't know, I'd love to hear your theories. But now all that's left to do is to complete seven challenges, where I had to visit Aunt May's grave, perform 30 air tricks without touching the ground, speak to a trophy on a church, use 25 symbiote powers during a surge, run around a baseball pitch, I don't know man, Parker does it all with the home run bunt, defeat 100 enemies with the iron spider arm abilities, and finally fly from one side of the map to the other using only the web wings. No swinging, no zipping, no touching the ground, only gliding. 
It took a few attempts to find the right path, but when I finally did it, I got my final trophy saw and got that sweet, sweet platinum. And that's how I 100%ed Spider-Man 2 on the PS5. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, smash like, hit subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you want to see me play more non-Nintendo games. And I'll see you all soon. Peace.